let me tell you a bit more about me. I'm a qualified solicitor. I went to the University of Birmingham, swear word, around here. Uh, I read law, I went to law school, I did a training contract, I practiced law for six years with some really good firms. I often wore a suit, I had to shave, but only sometimes. Two years ago, me and a couple of mates set up a charity. Love Brum supports hidden gem projects in Birmingham that are delivering real change to our city. We've supported 60 local projects, we have hundreds of followers, and we've just received a wedge of money from the National Lottery to help us improve our infrastructure and continue to do the cool things that we're doing. I own a company, I employ people, I've created jobs. I once jumped on a, on a bike uh, in Switzerland, cycled all the way back to Birmingham, seven countries in seven days, 770 miles to raise 200,000 pounds for kids with cancer. I was awarded a points of light. Prime Minister David Cameron, probably the last thing you did. Uh, and I've been invited back to number 10 a few times to talk about community, charity, and startups. On the subject of startups, I've helped support small businesses raise approximately a million pounds in funding. I'm a committed family man. I had to get that on, my wife told me. Um, so not bad, you know, not bad for a chav. And you know what, I don't, I don't list those for praise. You can give me that later, you've got my Twitter handle. Um, I actually list that in the hope that what you initially thought could be slightly different to what you now see. Now I've told you the why, the when, the how. Your mindset may have changed somewhat. But more importantly, if it hasn't, to remind you that those opinions that you have of me could be triggered by this bias that you can't really control. And that's the problem, because there's loads of these biases. There's loads of these mindsets, and unfortunately it creates so many limitations. So how do you go um, about dealing with it? I mean, at the end of the day, the problems are that these mindsets install stereotypes. And the problem is, it's not that these stereotypes are incorrect. I am bald. I've got little legs. I am muscular. I've got a beard. I'm a bit of a chav. The problem is, is that they're incomplete. One story is the only story. And people continue to embrace that only story. We risk some serious and critical misunderstandings. So how do we get around it? I mean, it's not, it's not easy. I try and sort of deal with it by accepting that it exists. So when I'm, I am asked to make a decision, I think about, I wonder what's sort of making me feel that way. And to embrace diversity. I think that's the best thing to do, to move towards those groups of people, those feelings, those smells, those colors, whatever it might be, that are making you feel uncomfortable. And invest in diversity. Because if you do, I promise you good things will happen. Because diversity is pretty cool. It's everywhere. Uh, and particularly, it's in, it's in businesses. You'll see it in businesses quite a bit. Kinsey and company did a report. Uh, they, they spoke to 300 multinational companies. And it was found that uh, the companies that sat in the top third when it comes to ethnic diversity were 35% more likely to deliver better financial returns than their competitors. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Pretty significant. There's also reports that suggest that cultural diversity, uh, culturally diverse groups will produce more accurate work because they pull down on a wider variety of skills and experiences. I mean, that's pretty cool for diversity, right? A big wall. But also, there's a lot of data, unfortunately, to suggest that diversity is still being hamstrung somewhat by mindsets that have been imposed by society and what have you. There's a report in Australia, 2,000 employees were interviewed and over two thirds of them felt that their diversity, which was their Asian origin, restricted them in the workplace. That a mindset, a traditional mindset that was imposed upon them by their employers, employers sort of made them have to conform and therefore reduce the amount of creative creativity they could produce and how successful they were. So there's clearly still an imbalance or something to be said about embracing diversity and then trying to deal with this shift in mindsets. And it's far more of a sophisticated conversation than I'll ever be able to give you. So certainly not for today. But we can touch upon it. Every person is a complex individual. We're shaped by family status, education, skills, culture, race, in my case, KFC, composition. Um, we all share a beautiful human experience, but we're definitely all very right? And that's something that should be celebrated. For me, I, I love that. But we really do need to address the complexity as soon as we can and embrace this subconscious bias that we have so we don't risk actually 
any more harmful assumptions about our fellow humans. And in fact, we remove an opportunity then by actually giving us a broader understanding. I saw this a lot in my charity work. Um, you see, the traditional mindset of charity is one that it's, it comes from a position of weakness, of inadequacy, of burden, of need. But you know what, that's, that's wrong. If we shifted that traditional mindset into a mindset that was probably existed with someone a bit more optimistic or a social entrepreneur, you'd find that they see charity and not-for-profits from being in a position of strength, of opportunity, of effectiveness, together, mission, all this sort of stuff. And that's the sort of stuff that I'm trying to dial into. And I try and, well, I suggest that you do that too. Because if I didn't, I would have missed a lot of beautiful things over the last couple of years. Would I, would I have assumed or thought, if I'd adopted that traditional mindset, that there were tons of people out there, there was people with ABC backgrounds, with XYZ skin, delivering superb counseling services around sophisticated subjects such as stillbirth and neonatal death. Would I, not on my Nelly, would I have gone to ABC Ward thinking that I'd find people with XYZ addictions delivering beautiful and amazingly structured processes around rehabilitation and prevention. And not a chance are them kids from that background going into local care homes to engage in intergenerational activities, singing, dancing, talking, reading with the local tenants. Not a chance. But you know what? They are. There's hundreds of projects, hundreds of projects on our doorstep Diverse, rich groups of people coming together, different languages, different race, different cultures, different understandings, as volunteers to deliver the change that I bet you and I want to see, especially in Birmingham. Do they face opposition imposed on them by traditional mindsets? Of course they do. Do they overcome them? Massively, definitely so. And they do that a number of ways. One, sheer grit and determination. Excuse me. And two, and a massive learning for me, they're just themselves. They embrace that diversity that they know brings strength. They don't adopt, they don't transform their approach to suit someone's assumptions or someone's mindsets. Something that I fell foul of when I was a lawyer. I wore glasses to try and look clever. Uh, I said my name was Peter instead of PJ. I wore long jumpers in the heat to cover my tattoos. These don't do this. They don't adopt, they don't negotiate, they know their strength, and they push on through regardless, and as I said, create some wonderful, wonderful things. And that is why I think diversity will always win. So next time you're asked to make a recommendation, or an assumption, or a judgment on somebody, like you were at the start of my talk, if nothing else from this speech, just remember to try and embrace that subconscious. Think about what's triggering those opinions of yours. You see, we're always going to over or underestimate people's ability to do things based on the way they look, the way they sound. But if together we continue to rub away those blind spots, we'll soon realize that diversity is an essential ingredient in any high-performing society. There's strength in difference, so let's recognize the strength in others. There's a great little saying, very simple. It's of Muslim origin, I believe. It says that you need a number of cool and beautiful flowers to make an awesome bouquet. So let's be different together. Let's each and one of us be one of those flowers. And together, let's watch Birmingham especially quickly become that beautiful bouquet. Thank you.